What's going on, Fight Fans? This is Sean with Boxing Socialist and Other Sports here with Miguel Flores. Miguel, coming up in November, is going to be fighting for a title shot against Leo Santa Cruz. Miguel, how you doing today? I'm doing great. Doing great. Excited. Uh, blessed yeah. to have this opportunity, you know, present itself to me. Right. So, Miguel, <laughs> so let's take it all the way back. Um, a lot of us Houston people know who you are. People in Texas know who you are. But for everybody across the world, um, tell people your name, where you from, where you grew up at. My name's Miguel Flores. Um, I'm a kid from Mexico. I was born in Mexico. A lot of people don't know I was born in Mexico. Oh, I, I didn't know that. <laughs> um, I came here. With my parents brought me here. I was about three, four years old. So I grew up in Houston, you know. But uh, you know, Mexico. That's I represent always Mexico, a hundred percent. Yeah. And just a hardworking kid. Yeah. You know, not gonna say I've always liked boxing because my dad <laughs> kind of forced it up on me. Yeah. But uh, throughout the year, just fell in love with this sport, and now you know I'm, right. I'm one step away from from the top of the throne. So working hard, and, and right. that's what's got me here to this to this point. Yeah, you know, Miguel, I'm glad you said because now you give me hope because I push my little girl to do boxing and she kind of halfway <laughs> likes it. Yeah, halfway. So now I'm hoping that she falls What kid likes it. to get hit, right? <laughs> what kid likes to get hit for a living? <laughs> All right, and tell everybody, um, so growing up, did you grow up, you grew up, well, after you moved here, so you actually grew up here. I mean, was it a nice area? I mean, when you went outside, were you, was it kind of place like, man, I can't stay on the streets past, you know, yeah. nighttime. Did you, was it drug deals going around? Were you in a nice suburban? I mean, what was I, it like growing up here? My parents, I was always, I'm always real thankful to them, even though, you know, uh, sometimes you have little bumps with your parents, but yeah. I was, I'm super thankful because they always gave me every, every hope, every chance. Um, mm -hmm. My dad was strict. My dad's always been a strict dad. Okay. You know, he's on my butt all the time. And mm -hmm. even, you know, knowing how dangerous boxing is, mm -hmm. he's always, you know, my mom's a sweet, sweetheart. You know, she's the right, most right. lovable lady ever. Yeah. But they gave me every opportunity, you know, to, to do and, and whatever I want. Mm -hmm. You know, obviously, I chose to pursue this boxing dream. So they always supported me to the fullest. My whole family, my sister, mm -hmm. you know, even even after what happened with my brothers, they support me. My my wife, I got two kids now, so my family's been very supportive. And growing up was probably uh, a little hard because my mom was always working. My dad too. Uh, my mm -hmm. brother used to take care of me more than anything. My brother was the one that was always on my, you know, making sure I was uh, going to school, yeah. and uh, you know acting right in school because right. I was a little little knucklehead <laughs> in school but uh you know I'm just thankful for them because you know without them I wouldn't be where, right. where I'm at today and you know and I can see that because that happens now you know parents are working hard for parents I mean parents are working hard for the kids and a lot of times the older siblings look at how much older was your brother did he my brother was about eight nine years older than me so you know I oh, was so like, by the time you were like eight he was driving already. Yeah, he was 16. driving okay. already. So he's the one that used to, you know, take me to the gym and pick me up from school. Yeah. If a uh, teacher had something bad to say, <laughs> you still call him. And, you know, he was just like, hey, you better straighten now or we're going to have to go tell dad. I was like, all right. So I knew when he said that I had to, you know, straighten out. So yeah, my dad and, and my mom knew, like, I was in good hands with my brother. And, right. like, honestly, he made me the, the person I am today. And one thing I always uh, remember my brother telling me, uh -huh. besides everything besides working hard besides yeah. staying online he's always just be humble right. that's the one thing i could always tell you that right. you know maybe throughout the years uh I'm, sometimes you know when you boxing sometimes <laughs> no fame gets to you maybe you're not humble but i know what that word right. means and, right. and you know that's one thing my brother always implements stay humble stay yeah. humble with everybody shake everybody's hand like they're yeah. the same because everybody's the same in this world you know right so uh, all right especially talking about the sibling were y'all any different from all other siblings? Because I got two daughters, and I swear, growing up, they fight like cats and dogs. And I'm like, man, sit down, be quiet, stop messing. It. Like, were y'all like any other brothers? Like, man, you know, don't push me, and and man, why are you coming in my room and leave me yeah. alone? I can tell you, we were as close as two brothers as you would ever find. Okay, good. Um, it got to the point where when he got married, uh, he would tell his wife, "Oh, I gotta go stay with my little brother. I gotta focus." And he would go in there and stay with me, watch movies, you know. Yeah. Where, 
I could maybe remember once or twice that we actually got into into you know real <laughs> fights and that was serious you know it was serious oh, stuff. Wow, yeah. And one time my mom had to break us up because oh, we started swinging <laughs> on each other. I hit him, and I'm sure after because I hit him good, and after that he was gonna kill me. But yeah. my mom got in the way, and that's one time I can yeah. remember that we ever. But other than that, man, we were as close as brothers as we could be. Always okay. checking up on me. I was making sure I was yeah. good. And same with him, you know, running together, training together. Everything we did was always okay. together. All right. So, so you grew up here in Houston. <clears throat> Parents worked a lot to support y'all. Your older brother took care of you, took you to the gym and kept you out of trouble. Um, and your brother, and I've talked to many people here. When I first met you, and I don't know why. I wish I got a chance to mention, but because every when I met you, and I would ask, so you know, this Miguel Flores kid seems, man, you know, he's yeah. destined for something. And they're like, man, you should have saw his brother. That's all I kept hearing from different people. Yeah, his brother had this hook out the world. This his brother was this and that. You know, Miguel's the younger brother. Yeah, and I was like, darn, like his brother was getting down <laughs> like that. They're like, yeah. yeah, man, like he could fight. And I said, okay. And then I start looking more into your story. And like you said. From previous interviews and while you know and back, mm -hmm. you know you've admitted that he's the one that inspired you. You know you, I guess you would go to the gym and you watch him train, exactly. and you're like, I mean, being a father is that something that that was just in you, like man, you know I could do this too, or just watching your brother is more like, man, if he can do it, I can do it. It's a it's a little bit of everything, you know. Everything you just said is a little bit of all that. Um, to be a fighter, you gotta have a little something in you, cause mm -hmm. you got all the ability, all the skills. But if it's not in you, if you right. don't have the courage, the guts to do it, it's not gonna work right. for you. But also watching him, you know, mm -hmm. growing up, I would always, when he was already fighting pro man, I would see people come up asking for a picture, asking for a little autograph, and I was mm -hmm. like, hey, <laughs> yeah, I like this, I like this, it's nice, <laughs> you know, I have the attention on you. Even though he was a quiet guy, he was the most quiet guy you could ever, ever, ever meet. Yeah, but he was, you know. Like they said, he was a he was you know an animal in the ring, just yeah. a volume puncher, throws left hooks to the body, to the head, great amateur. And then um, I guess he just you fall in love with the sport, but you also fall out of love with the sport. Mm. And when he turned pro, I guess he just you know he didn't right. he didn't have that uh, love for it no more. Yeah. And and one thing I can say about my brother, he was a uh, you know he could have been world champion. He's a perfect right. could have, but it just he didn't. He didn't want it. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. just like that. Yeah. You know, sometimes you have other aspirations, other things, other sure. goals in mind. And he had, uh, he let other distractions get to him. Right. Um. Obviously, uh, he was talented. Everybody asks us, uh, did you ever spar? Yeah, we sparred. Okay. He would take it easy on me. Yeah, uh, you're like eight years but, younger. <laughs> yeah, but uh, it was getting to the point where he's like, hey, you know, you're hitting me hard enough where mm. is that getting easy with you? Okay. Okay. You know, so I would hit him with a good <laughs> shot and he'll come right back, like, to let me know, like, <laughs> You know, calm your ass yeah. down because yeah. you know, I could I could stop you. Right. But uh, and <laughs> years later, years later, now that we're like ten years from his passing, yeah. I still sometimes think like, man, what would it be like now? Right. What would it be? Because obviously he was a straight come forward um, a mm. boxing puncher, right. and I'm more of a technical mm. uh, boxer. You know, so I'm right. like, man, you know, just and and it's funny because uh. Rocky Juarez is a mutual guy that we both sparred and I always ask right. Rocky and he's like, man, it's just hard to tell. It's yeah. hard to tell because he sparred both of us. He sparred my brother when he was in yeah. his better days. And now later, uh, like 2015, 2016, he sparred me. So he's like, man, y'all just way different fighters. Right, you know, right. But it's something that's always going to be questioned. Yeah. You know, what would have happened? <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Well, Miguel, let me ask you this. What about your father? A lot of people pick up boxing from the father. Was your father ever a boxer? Or if not a boxer, was he just an athlete in general? Did he play sports? Yeah. No, my father. My father's a, a rough man. I, l I love that guy to okay. death. He just, like I said, we just bump heads. Um, yeah. We don't see eye to eye and some things. And, you know, it's just like any father, certain relationship. Uh, growing up, he, uh, you know, he always lived in Mexico, but he always had the dream to fight. Obviously, uh, okay. in Mexico, poverty, uh, he always used to say uh, he didn't have the, you know, the way to yeah. find a gym yeah. and, and yeah. give. To them, it was a luxury. You know, yeah. If you yeah. start yeah. boxing, it's a luxury, yeah. you know, because you, you could afford it. And he said, yeah, I was wanting to do it, but his parents couldn't afford it. So mm. he kind of uh, put his dream on us. Um, mm. But he loved boxing. But he loved boxing. He used okay. to watch Chavez and all those fights. You know, he was yeah. a, a hardcore Chavez Barrera fan, you know, growing right. up. And um, 
even though here he's always been uh you know um uh we want to call it a competitor he's always out there running you'll see you'll yeah. see my my father at memorial running and oh, wow. always trying even to in do, his older years he's, yeah okay. even trying to do something you know like i said <laughs> we don't see eye to eye but i love yeah, my yeah. father to death right. my mother too you know we're, right. we're always you know and they're always supporting me so that's what matters good good